you think you're still gonna go for that mystery boy persona? I feel like this interview kind of killed that because he just <laughs> talked about everything. Well, I go back and I look at old cartoons that I would draw yeah. or like characters that I would create in video games and they all pretty much look how I look now. When I was in middle school, I, was, I did robotics. In my opinion, like, and any artist watching this, like, this is really how I feel, like, you're gonna have if you're smart, spend your time networking anyway. Like, mm -hmm. don't let your network be reliant on some other man or woman. I was gonna say I'm living a little less reckless than I used to, but no, I'm not. <laughs> Hi, this is Lauren Engel of Sidewalk Talk. Today I'm here with Real Ransom. What up? <laughs> <laughs> so you're born in Harlem? Actually, I was born in Queens. Oh, okay. I was born in Queens. I lived there till I was about 10. And then I moved to Harlem, grew up there. Are your parents from Queens? My mom is from, she's also from all over the place. My dad's from Queens, so like mm -hmm. my dad and like his family, we were all like in Queens, mm -hmm. yeah. And your mom was in a band initially, right? That's how she met your dad? Like yeah, she was looking for a drummer and my dad is an amazing drummer to this day, and he auditioned, and uh, the rest was history. So was your mom, like, her whole life was doing music, or like, what kind of career was yeah, she? Yeah, she was, <laughs> she's done a lot of things. She's, <laughs> like, was doing fashion for a while, mm. and, like, won awards, like, oh, wow. making hats, like, on crazy shit. That's so cool. But uh, she also wrote, um, she was a writer, played bass, like, produced That's like so she cool. did all she was Whoa. she's like a badass yeah <laughs> what kind of music did it sound like uh her well her band i think was like on some almost like steel drum band kind of thing oh. like they had they were on a whole different type of vibe but she's been in multiple bands like she's done a lot of shit mm -hmm. my dad too did yeah. they like is are their bands known like did they tour around or was yeah it i mean local? it's crazy because like if this was now we would no have known them, but like... Was that a bee um, I tried to hit? <laughs> well, he's gone now. Yeah. So, uh, but like back then, there was no like Twitter or Instagram. Yeah. So it was like, you could be huge where you're at and like be touring and like mm -hmm. people just might not know. If the press didn't report yeah. on you, that people just didn't know about you, so... Did they make CDs at least? I Like how know. far did they go? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> because the thing is, like by the time I feel like Oh, it was Cassette, or I don't know. Like that. Yeah, but by the time like they were gonna do anything like that, I feel like they took different paths. Mm. Like my dad was take, just being more of just a drummer, playing, but like going on tour just as a drummer for other people. Mm. And then my mom like was raising me and my brother, and was like getting more into fashion. So you know they kind of went in to do other things before it ever became like. My dad had a band that had a deal. I just oh, found uh, that. I don't even know that. <laughs> but uh, I've seen his press pictures. Just oh. yeah. getting fits off. <laughs> what kind of music were they playing around the house? Um, you know, it's funny. Like, I definitely got put on the shit by my parents. Like, they were listening to the R&B station. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes, like, Hot 97 or whatever, just hearing whatever was popular and mm -hmm. out. Um, but I was also like a hermit, like even then, like I would, I put myself on a lot of shit. Like I was locked in a room watching like TRL. So like, that's how I found out about Justin a lot of the Timberlake. music. Oh my God, don't even get me started. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you describe your personality growing up? Um, I was always kind of like, I always felt like I had two sides. Like, mm -hmm. I could always be the class clown and make jokes and be funny, but like also I was very secluded and like kept to myself, um, entertained myself. But also, because I live, I also, I always live far away from my friends oh. historically. So I uh, was just like in my room, like, I mean, when I was super young. Until mm -hmm. I got like old enough to fucking be outside and shit. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's kind of how I was. But, you said but I carried that yeah. kind of energy, that duality mm -hmm. with me. But you said in previous interviews that you didn't really fit in though, right? No, I uh, still don't feel like I do. Mm -hmm. um, but 
you know, it was just one of those things where um, I was into shit that the kids around me weren't into. Like what? Oh yeah, because you like the anime and stuff. Yeah, like I like <laughs> anime, I like pro wrestling, I liked, I mean, even just different music. Like, people, like, I, I liked Daft Punk and uh, mm -hmm. people were like, that's, you're gay. <laughs> like, <laughs> which is already, that's crazy for enough reasons on its own, but it's like, you know, you listen to house music, that clearly means you're a homosexual. Mm. Um, but, you know, I was just ahead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was just super ahead. Mm -hmm. um, what What do you think influenced you to, like, kind of, like, out of the, the norm? Was it, like, your parents were always, like, more open to different things? Or, like, what characteristic do you I think, think came from? I think it's that. I think it's that. I think it's because I grew up around different types of people. Mm. Um, like, I had friends from all walks of life. And so they put me on to stuff. Like, I remember I got put on to Eminem, like, on the school bus. Like, my friend. The, and the only reason... You would be grouped by, like, the route. So, like, the people you'd be around would be based on who lived on, like, a direction that you were going. So I just happened to be with this kid, and he put me on to the rapper that made me, like, fall in love with music and... Uh, yeah, so mm -hmm. it's just crazy shit like that. Like, I really just would attribute it to kind of the multicultural aspect of New York City. Mm -hmm. And how about your fashion style itself, right? You're already experimenting, yeah. like, doing yeah. makeup, oh, like eyeliner back then. <laughs> no, no, I wasn't on that you wave weren't? yet. No, oh, okay. I wasn't on that wave yet. I, uh, but you know what? I, I kind of was because, you know, I go back and I look at old cartoons that I would draw yeah. or, like, characters that I would create in video games and they all pretty much look how I look now. Oh. So even if I didn't look like that now, like, I... It was in my head, mm -hmm. you know, it's how I felt inside. Yeah. <laughs> so your fashion inspiration back then was anime. Or well, I guess I'm a lot now. of different things. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely anime is still an inspiration. Mm -hmm. um, pro wrestling, Jeff Hardy, um, you know. And then also just growing up in Harlem, you know, you might <laughs> walk around and see a, a pink camouflage do right. So. <laughs> I carry that with me too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it comes from uh, a lot of, and it's also just my mood too. Mm -hmm. like how I'm feeling that day. Aaliyah, huge yeah. uh, everything influence on me. So but I'd say that's where my fashion influences mm -hmm. come from. Did you always know that you were gonna be in music somewhere or another? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. I mean, first I wanted to be a skateboarder. Oh, were you competitive? I, I never even got to get into it because <laughs> like when I, I wanted I was like eight or nine and I wanted to get a skateboard and um, my parents were like no like there's no we're not letting you fuck with that like we're mm -hmm. not letting you like break your arm and like <laughs> whatever but it was like it was to the point where I couldn't even like save up for one and get one because it, it was just banned so, like mm -hmm. no skateboarding like it's not happening so I was like fuck like I gotta whatever my next thing is I gotta find it and not tell anyone <laughs> <laughs> I gotta like figure it out on my own. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. I, then yeah. probably when I was around 11 or 12, um, I started getting more into music and wanting to write raps and just play, toying with the idea in my head. Mm -hmm. But you never like freestyled back then, right? Oh, I definitely did. But I was in the public. Hell yeah! I was just talking to my boy, um, my boy Jonah. Shout out to Jonah. We were just talking about how crucial battle rapping was like in middle mm. school and shit and like high school like that was like because if you couldn't play ball yeah like you had to have something like you know what i mean <laughs> like if you couldn't you had you had to have some type of or, or girls are looking at you crazy so I, <laughs> anyone from my middle school or high school watching this will tell you i was undefeated i was cooking everybody oh, wow. yeah it was it was crucial. <laughs> crucial hearts were broken for sure <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what happened after high school uh, I mean, by the time I got to the end of high school, that's when I, by that time, I started putting music out on the internet. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, put out my first mixtape, as Row Ransom, in 2012. Yeah. It's called Ransomnia. And uh, the, there, and here we are now. <laughs> you know? um, mm -hmm. As soon as I got out of high school, I, I was um, working with my, still my good friend, Mike Wax, who is the creator of Ill Roots. Mm -hmm. And um, we were partnering together, working on different projects, and starting to build a fan base mm -hmm. online that way. And uh, it's just been a steady incline ever since. Yeah. yeah. 
Did you have anyone mentor you when you were starting out? Like, did you know people who could connect you? Because your parents, like, they didn't really know anyone, right? It's like a different decade. I mean, it's funny because, like, my dad ended up still working in the industry in a certain aspect. And um, he had a ton of connections and still does. But oh, I never okay. really went to him for that. And then also, two of my parents broke up. So, mm. like, my dad was always and still is in my life but like i wasn't around him every day so like i i only saw him when i saw him like on weekends mm. so uh there I, I, at that point it was just like i was doing this shit on my own so any mentors i did have like i would consider like i have a friend named max from chicago who i think he had like heard he like heard my shit on myspace and was like I fuck with you, you're hard, like, mm -hmm. let me take you under my wing, like, type shit, and, uh, so I, I would consider him a mentor, but even to this day, like, I have never really had anybody really guide me, like, it's, I, I've always kind of been, I don't know, un, I don't want to say I'm uncoachable, but that spirit guide just hasn't shown up yet, mm -hmm. you know? I hope I'm not, like, forgetting anybody who's, like, <laughs> clearly been, like, a, you know, a serious mentor mm -hmm. for me. But, um, yeah, it's a lot of it's been, and even the people that I work with, you know, whether it be a Mike Wax or my management or um, whoever, a distributor for this mixtape or that mixtape. It's, like, we're all, it's all partnerships where mm -hmm. we're all just, like, in the field together. Yeah. So, um, yeah, who knows? How did you meet Kensei? We grew up together. Um, I don't even remember how we met anymore. Like, I don't even think he knows. Like, we just, as far back as I can remember, I've known him. And uh, he's from my neighborhood in Queens. Um, and he's, like, one of the first friends I had, wow. period, yeah. So, we've seen <laughs> some shit together. <laughs> <laughs> so you put out your first mixtape in, like, 2012 mm -hmm. by yourself. Was it already getting kind of recognition was on MySpace? No, no oh. actually, it was, uh, I guess I would have put it out on Dat Piff, maybe. Oh, okay. It was 2012, but yeah, I mean, it was, people still talk to me about that shit to this day. Whoa, you know, um, that's seven years ago. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, people still talk to me. I was just talking to Jazz Cartier, FaceTime me yesterday oh. playing it. No Literally way. Literally last night, yeah. Whoa. Um, so, if, if people hold it close to their hearts, and so do I. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, people, people were, people were fucking with it. I was very grateful for the response that we got from mm -hmm. that project. Because it started everything. Yeah. Everything started there. Were you working other jobs while juggling music initially? Uh, no. I, probably by the time I got out of high school, like I went to college for a millisecond and what were you gonna study english oh i fucked with college it was i mean and then i was like kind of dabbling and like thinking about doing something with computer science but oh wow where did that interest come from seems so like computer science yeah uh I, I, it's actually not that like uh i guess weird for me mm -hmm. if you like had known me because like when I was in middle school, I, was, I did robotics. Oh, what? I was like, yeah, I was in my bag, crazy. Were you, were you um, like really academic? You did not really at well. all. I was kind of like a that bad robotics. student. Yeah, I, That's so random though. Because I, I don't know. I just feel like the, the structure, the way school's set up, it just didn't, could, they couldn't hold my attention. Mm -hmm. Especially my generation. It's just like uh, iPhones came out. Yeah. And we're all like, yo, I got apps, bro. Like, I, you're trying to stand in front of this classroom and, like, lecture me for an hour. Like, I could be on Vine right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was a little tough, but, uh. But why, how did you get curious about, like, robotics and computer science? I don't even know. Probably just, like, on some, like, being a kid watching PBS mm. and, like, motherfuckers on Zoom or, like, creating crazy after school projects. And I wanted to do some ill shit, too. Mm -hmm. You know, and especially when you're that young, like, I didn't know what I wanted to do or what I wanted to be. Like, I didn't know. Yeah. I was, like, 12, just, uh, figuring. I mean, even still, so, it reappearing in the form of, like, computer science, like, wasn't, it wasn't a shock to, like, my family or anything. <laughs> but that didn't last. Yeah. I dropped my insomnia, and I've, I've been putting in work ever since. Mm -hmm. So, what was uh, the 
turning point that you wanted to quit? Like you put that out, but then was it like a lot of momentum that you're like, well, I just can't go to school and do this anymore? Yeah, I mean, it also kind of felt like, it also just felt like a lot of money is being spent mm -hmm. behind my families and the governments on this, and I don't care. Yeah. Like, I, I'm not present in this, like, it, it just, it was like a guilt. Mm -hmm. I was like, this shit doesn't even feel right. Like, I'm going, and I know I don't care, and my heart is here right now, so why am I wasting everybody's time and money? And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, maybe I'll go back. I always think about how Lil Wayne went to college, like, in the height of his career. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, maybe I'll go back. <laughs> <laughs> but your parents were fine with you doing music, right? Like you never had objections because they're musicians? Yeah, I mean, they because they also know what it's like to have parents who don't get it. Mm -hmm. So they didn't want to be that way. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you think you got the initial momentum? Or like people found your music? Um, I mean, honestly, it's been a really gradual process. Like, mm -hmm. I can't really pinpoint one thing. Um, I mean, definitely my biggest song is See Me Fall, but... Even that took a long time to get to where it got. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's really been gradual. Like even the Ransomnia mixtape to the Row Ransom is the Future mixtape yeah. in 2014. Uh, it was the end of 2014. It might have been in the 15. Because I put it out as three separate discs. But um, like it's just been like a steady incline mm -hmm. over all these years. It hasn't really been one thing. But if I had to pinpoint one thing, I would say that See Me Fall definitely put a lot of people on to me that had no idea who I was before mm -hmm. that. Yeah. How did you meet your management? Um, at the time, I was being managed by my homie Adam Schultz. Um, he's an a and at Atlantic now, actually. Mm -hmm. But back then, he was just not just, but he was a kid going to NYU that believed in my music and... Uh, found me on Twitter. I think we found each other on Twitter or something. <laughs> Honestly, most of the stories when you ask me how I met someone, it's probably going to be Twitter. I think Instagram. that's us too. <laughs> yeah, you know. So, uh, that's how I met him. It's just through Twitter and we linked up and became friends and he believed in my music and we, we put that whole plan together, me and him. So. And he, you're still with him now? No, actually, oh, I don't okay. know. I don't have him anymore. Oh, okay. what's that like? It's great. I feel yeah? great. Yeah, yeah, I feel feel free mm -hmm. um i feel i feel very autonomous mm -hmm. and powerful and i like feeling that mm -hmm. way is it yeah. difficult though because then you have to spend more time networking like i don't know if you're like a networking type person but in my opinion like and any artist watching this like this is really how i feel like you're gonna have, if you're smart spend your time networking anyway like mm -hmm. don't let your network be reliant on some other man or woman like mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, if that person, God forbid, something happens to that person, or if they're not doing their job, or if they get caught up, or if for any reason, or you get in a fight with them, that's your network. Mm -hmm. So, you know, at yeah. the end of the day, I never really even looked at it like that, because I always have been of the belief of, I have to build my own network anyway. So it's been fun. It's, yeah. been, it's been the way that it's always been. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and also, I guess that's advice for how you go about networking. Like, do you find yourself going to more of events to meet people or how do you go about it? I mean, yeah, I, I kind of look at it as like a 360 degree thing mm -hmm. where you kind of have to just do everything. Um, be places, be, not and not just be places, but when you interact with people, um, it sounds so cliche, but be genuine, be mm -hmm. present, be, uh, understand your value and what you have to offer even if it's just information <clears throat> because you know those are the type of things that are going to make people want to speak to you a second time yeah exactly um, so mm -hmm. yeah you gotta you gotta have to do everything be email cold emails fucking dms like I, it's funny like people dm me now sending me their shit even if I don't respond, they'll just keep sending it, keep sending it. And, like, yeah. I, I fuck with that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, do whatever. Like, I saw your interview with Emmy. Mm -hmm. And she was talking about how she uh, yeah. just DM'd a bunch yeah, of producers. Yeah, the same. Like, her singing. Exactly. And, like, uh, she found Rex Kudo that way. So, it's like, you know, you just have to do everything. You have to put yourself in a position where 
Because you don't know what shot's gonna land. Yeah. So you have to take every shot. Mm -hmm. yeah. You think you're still gonna go for that mystery boy persona? I feel like this interview kind of killed that because he just <laughs> talked about everything. No, I mean, that's the funny part is, uh, the, you could never kill the mystery boy persona because it's, you know, it's it's who I am. Yeah. You know, it's it's like, what, because you know Judge also, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's also so mysterious. I'm like, out of everyone, I'm surprised that you guys are like, wanting to do such a long form interview. Yeah, no, he's the most mysterious <laughs> people I'm able to get. That's awesome. No, it's because I, I fuck with your channel. Like, I saw I saw your shit with Emmy, I saw your shit with Dylan Brady, and I was like, yeah. I fuck with this. Like, uh, there's, a, there's some interviews that. I get asked to do and I'm like, I'm cool. <laughs> you know, you know how it is. Yeah. <laughs> what are your inspirations for your music videos? Oh man, so many. I think, you know, I think my generation kind of got spoiled with the kind of music videos we grew up watching. Um, Missy Elliott. Yeah. And Busta Rhymes and uh, Aaliyah, all those insane music videos. I mean, a lot of movies too, a lot of films. I uh, just recently started really getting into French films, which mm. the names of I can't pronounce. Yeah, but, it's hard. Um, you know, I, I really believe that videos are important and just art is important. Like I do all, I've been doing all my own artwork for my music for like the last three, four years. Mm -hmm. um, because I just, I really care. So I definitely put a lot of thought and time into my music videos. That was crazy that you toured with Dua Lipa, but yeah. were you, <laughs> that's interesting though, cause she's more, more pop. I guess you're on the same like booking, booking yeah. agency. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Do you think you're gonna go towards more of the pop side or what is as it like? As touring? It? Or no, just like your music in music general. Thing? I feel like you're able to balance both sides. Like, yeah. I feel like <laughs> not a lot of people would like fit Dua Lipa and also fit like rap. Right, you know? right. Yeah. I mean, I feel like honestly, I'll always have a piece of pop music in me because it's just something I love. Um, I love music, period. Like, I love Michael Jackson. I love Justin Timberlake. I love, um, I just found my boy Blaze just put me on to this artist last night named Burial that I had never oh. heard of. And I was like, how have I never heard of this? Like, I just love music. <laughs> yeah. So that'll always be there. But I'm definitely a rapper first and foremost, mm -hmm. primarily. Um, so I just, you know, and that's, that's part of the reason why I think the, the Dua Lipa tour happened and it was so cool is because it was like she didn't want to just have another artist that's exactly like her. Exactly, she yeah. She wanted to make it more interesting than that, so. How did the placement happen on um, the American Dream? Uh, oh, the Khalid album. Yeah. It was a crazy. That was a crazy time because shout out to my boy Hiko, who produced Flow a Tree and Might Go off of my last project Possessed. Mm -hmm. He, we were working together in New York at his studio that he had out there at the time, and he showed me this artist named Khalid. And he's like, yo, this dude's voice is crazy. He's from El Paso. Like, this dude, I think he only had out location, maybe. Mm. And I was like, oh, wow, this dude does have a crazy voice. And he's like, yeah, he's in the studio. Just, like, come through. Let's let's work on something. And that's just what we did. Yeah. Like, we didn't know what it was going to be. Like, we just, that's what we did all the time. And that's what we still do. Um, so, I pulled up. And we worked on a, a few songs. Um, he was just really down to earth and chill. And working on a lot, actually. He was pumping out songs. Uh, it was kind of crazy. So we, we did a few songs that day and, and one of them ended up being on his first album. I just now worked with Stephen James. Mm -hmm. He's an artist on Republic. He's super, 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 super dope. I wrote a song for him called Goddamn that I think just came out, actually. Oh, wow. Um, so I worked on that. I was in the studio with Kiara working on some stuff. We worked on stuff a bunch anyway <laughs> but um a few different things here and there and there's like a couple other ones that i don't really get to talk about yeah so <laughs> it's a mystery yeah. how do you say your music has changed compared to the early songs you made i definitely think i've explored my intuition a lot mm. um over the course of my projects and 
I think that, you know, I started out rapping more and I feel like now I'm singing more, but yeah, it's all living in the same world musically. And it's like you said, I balance both. Um, so don't, and that's another part of the mystery. It's like, don't ever get comfortable. You don't know what the fuck I might drop next. <laughs> <laughs> so, mm -hmm. um, yeah. How do you say you've grown as a person compared to when you were younger? In a million ways. Mm -hmm. um, smarter, wiser, sharper. I feel like I'm more empathetic. I feel like empathy is like one of the most important things. Uh, I'm living, I was gonna say I'm living a little less reckless than I used to, but no, I'm not. <laughs> like, who am I so kidding? I'm, I'm still living kind of reckless, <laughs> but you know, I, I feel like at least if I'm living reckless now, I'm way smarter about it and mm. I'm just more present. I just feel like I'm way more present and it's something that I'm working on so that five, six years from now, I can say that I'm way more present, way more tapped in than I was five years ago. So. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a that's a process. What would, what would you say have been your biggest challenges so far in life? Biggest challenge in life? I mean, I kind of feel like anyone's biggest challenge in life is defeating themselves. Mm. I feel like anyone's biggest challenge in life is looking at their own demons in the face and looking at their own uh, shortcomings in the face and trying to overcome them because. Of, after that, you can treat the world better and treat everybody else better and, and just be better at your craft. And I feel like, so I don't think I'm any different than anybody else in that respect. Mm -hmm. I would say that my biggest challenge is probably been me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's your advice on dealing with that? You really have to spend a lot of time with yourself. Like, I, I'm i big into meditation. Mm -hmm. and I feel like people go through life without even trying to learn themselves. Or they just go and just live yeah. and just exist and they don't ever stop to actually deeply analyze their own actions and thoughts and it's kind of fucking dangerous because you know you don't know why you're fucked up or why you're fucking other people up or you're just kind of going on cruise control without it so I think a really important thing is just to know yourself and work on knowing yourself uh, continually Mm -hmm. yeah. What does love mean to you? I just heard the Future album. He said some shit like, <laughs> lo like love ain't shit. Like uh, love is just a word to me. That shit don't mean shit. So I don't yeah, know. Maybe it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> um, love to me, I don't fucking know. Mm -hmm. I might be the wrong guy to ask because <laughs> I haven't gotten it figured out yet. But, you know, it, it, to, it feels like when you actually care about somebody and want them to get better and be better you like when you selflessly care about someone mm -hmm. and you can separate your own intentions versus what's actually best for them and yourself you know a lot of people are attached to people selfishly and I don't think that's love I think that's some like twisted kind of like putting on the venom suit yeah. <laughs> it's like you're just trying to do some weird takeover of my soul <laughs> like this isn't that's not love so yeah mm -hmm. i hope that was yeah i love that a decent explanation last question what yeah. do you want to be remembered for i want to be remembered for i want to be remembered for a great catalog I want people to know that I always put my best foot forward with every release that I put out. I, I want to be remembered for telling great stories, uh, affecting people's lives, um, changing people's worldviews. Like, I really just want people to be able to look at me and my mistakes and my successes and everything in between and just know that there's more out there for them, you know? like. We talked about earlier, you asked me like, oh, if I was wearing makeup in middle school or if mm -hmm. I was doing this or that, or, and it was like, nah, I wasn't, but now I'm free to be whoever the fuck I want to be. Mm -hmm. And the same goes for any of my audience or anyone who sees me on a screen. I just want to be that 
espresso shot to steal a euphemism from Kanye <laughs> that lets people be as free as they want and say, you know, fuck the system, dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, this is so great. Thank you so much. Of course, of course, of course. <laughs> Bye, guys.